Good morning, day I shave, quite strange, it's a uh, shower as we say in Scotland, it's blowing a hoolie outside, it's a tad windy, uh, the guy I don't play golf with his central heating is broken down, so I couldn't be bothered going out to play comedy golf, so I thought I'll have a shave early in the day, get out of the way, and uh, We'll take things from there. So, the word for today, as you're probably expecting, is a Gillette Stainless Red on shave number 8. That's the, the blade. The razor is Timeless Bronze Solid Bar. This is a 0.38 blade gap which I shall discuss in a bit more as we go through the shave. Three piece razor, top cap, base cap and plate. Machine from C954 bronze and uh, very very heavy. But this is one of those razors where the blade gap and the open comb is very similar. The blade gap on the bottom of the base plate is totally irrelevant. It means absolutely nothing and it almost goes to disprove the old blade gap. Oh, it's got a large blade gap. It's aggressive argument. So the blade's loaded. You can see there's a little bit of overhang on the side. The reason I say about the blade gap, we'll do this now, actually. Okay, I always said the reason for the blade gap is because I thought the head base plate in this area was narrow. Okay, so before I started the camera up, where are they? Right, the base plate on the timeless, the width edge to edge on a set of digital calipers is 22.5 millimeters. The Blackbird is 24.1 millimeters, so it's a mil and a half wider, which obviously means there's less blade exposure. The Rockwell is 24.8 millimeters side to side again and the last one I compared it to was the Rex Ambassador which edge to edge on the base plate came out at 25.6 millimeters so you can see there there's virtually three, three millimeters difference one and a half mil either side difference between the Rex and the Timeless and that's got a 0.38 blade gap. It may well have a 0.38 blade gap, but the blade exposure, because of the width of the base plate, is greater than the blade gap. That's that one done. A bit heavy after one cup of coffee. Right, the soap for today. I'm using my Giles shaving pedestal bowl. And you can see there's some soap in the bottom. The soap for today is the Jardin Short and Bell and this is Chambre which apparently means bedroom in French uh, this is made by James Riley from OSP but this range the Jardin Short and Bell range is vegetal not tallow unlike the OSP range hence the different name it's quite a, a soft soap And the scent was described to me as uh, Dior Fahrenheit with added citrus. That's what. Yeah, it smells like a cologne. It smells quite nice. James also said it's a vegetal soap. It's, a, it's and it's as good a soap base as he can make it without using towel. But it's vegetal, so the ingredients on the tub there 
if you wish to pause it and read. And this soap is being released to the market in the near future. James doesn't know when, so I can't give you a date. I've got a I was fortunate enough to get that off James uh, as, a, as part of a deal we did for uh, some shaving items. I sent him some items, he sent me some soap. Fair enough, isn't it? I was happy with the result, we both happy with the result, with the result. Good trade. And lastly, but not least, the brush for today is an absolute stunning looking brush. It is. Brush Guy Snowman, I don't know what you call it, with a cashmere knot. Uh, white, the camera just doesn't do it, will not do it justice. It's a white resin with mica starburst in there, and it's absolutely gorgeous. This brush is not mine, uh, this brush. I saw Chris from another cut above using the Bush Guy brush a few months ago. So I spoke to him and said, any chance you can measure the handle up? I've got a work colleague who's got a, a lathe and likes doing a bit of turning. Any chance you can measure the handle up in some of these dimensions? Well, I'm still waiting. Uh, a few weeks later, I saw a post from a gentleman on Instagram. And I looked back through his feed and I saw that he had more than one brush guy brush. So I asked him if he would again measure the handle and some of the dimensions. And the reply I got was a photograph with three brush guy brushes. And he said, pick one, I'll send it to you. No point in me measuring it. So he was good enough to send it up. And uh, I've just got this back from my work colleague and uh, who's copied the handle, made a template from it. So he's waiting on getting a chuck so once he's bought the hole he can turn the brush around and do it that way on the lathe. And he's using me as an excuse for his wife. That's what friends are for apparently. Uh, but I did speak to, to Les and ask him if I could use the brush before sending it back and he said, fill your boots. So it's a cashmere knot, I've never used a cashmere before. It's also a stunning, just a stunning looking brush. So I've got chambray in there. I'll just basically soak the brush and we'll get on knocking the ladder up. So yeah, sat the morning. Quite strange for me, she having a sat the morning. And when we play it to find it, hit it again. I've never smelt the off Fahrenheit, so I can't compare the soap to the base, but as you can see by that, that needs water. So, just going to put some water in the sink. We'll see how much water it takes. So now we'll start off with a teaspoon. That was about, uh, I, weighed, I did weigh the soap out just for comparison purposes. And it was 1.1 grams, that was in the bottom of the bowl. So yeah, that was a teaspoon of water. And we still need more. So there's a couple of soap makers now I've got. James thinks this is as good as towel, or as good as he can get a soap without using towel. That's quite a good claim really. So there's a couple of other soap makers. Uh, I know if Douglas over at Phoenix Artists and the Cookums has the, the CK6 line, which I'll hopefully be trying in the near future. Uh, again, vegan soap, but no towel.
But yeah, I reckon we could actually get some more water in that. I'm going to put another, another half spoon in. These are the half spoons, it's, it's a constant measurement, isn't it? So, instead of doing just dribbles from your fingers, if you want to put just a little bit in, fine. But, yeah, there's a bit of a sheen on there. I'm more than happy with that. So, I'll wet the face, get the floor throughout the brush. No, it doesn't rush up and punch you in the face the scent. It's pleasant, it's not overpowering. I think that's the biggest difference between the UK artisans and the American artisans. I think our soaps are probably subtler on the scent as opposed to running up and giving you a big slap Cash me or not yeah well, I hope I like it because I've bought one of them to go in a brush that's being made I don't know what it's getting made from, no it's getting made from wood, obviously. He makes like chisel handles and that sort of thing, so I've got no idea what sort of wood he's using. So I'll get some heat. Another timeless, and we've got a timeless bronze, jerk stain and sweat. As you can tell, went and saw my favourite Turkish barber yesterday. Had the hair cut, the eyebrows done, and you had the had the flaming ears as the hairs were syringed from them. Next year with the cutthroat with a disposable derby blade, single edge that I used. A brand new blade, and it went in the bin afterwards. So yeah. The boy done good. Made him laugh though, so wasn't he? He says, so can you shave me? So can you just shave my head. So how short? So you see the bit in the middle? Make the sides match. And he just started laughing. Okay. Beat him a few times and uh, never had a shave, a shave from him. His haircuts are spot on, so I've got no issue with that. This soap, it's just it's plenty of guide. Working really well. If any of you, any, anyone bought from OSP during his Black Friday sale. I think James is sending out samples of Chambray with, uh, with the soaps. So I know that there's a few people got samples of it out there.
you like heavy razors, that's just that thing makes the, the future look like look like a middleweight. Yeah, plenty of slickness there, bear in mind I did ball over it. But there's still plenty of slickness. the pencil again we've got Christmas tree tomorrow once I find it in the loft This is building. You can see I've got plenty of soap from this ball is really comfortable in the hand. The little nodules or nipples at the bottom of the ball. Knock up the ball really well. Knock up the ball, knock up the soap really well. I help knock up the soap really well, just a little bit of friction. Not quite cold enough for a scuttle yet. So if you're looking for something for Christmas, there'll be a link below to uh, Charles Shaving. I speak to Ross. I'm sure he'll be able to sort you out with a ball, whether it was be a handled ball or a pedestal ball. I know he, had a, he was doing a firing during the week, last weekend. Yeah, a killing load going through. I don't know what it was. I did see a couple of posts from him on social media. To that effect.
Okay, no more pickle point. As you can see, plenty of slickness, plenty of residual slickness from the salt. Yep, I'm calling that one there. We are done. Still got plenty in there, plenty in there, and I don't need any more. So I'm going to have a face wash with this, and then we're back for the post shave. So. See you in a minute. Yeah, really nice shave. I've just had a rinse off with some warm water and cold water. And we're going to go straight to the DIY Witch Hazel and Aloe Vera Gel, which is Mixed about 70 30, 80 20, something like that. I just use a spray bottle because it's saves decant and stuff. I just spray it on my face and where you go. Voila, you are done. There's no scent in that. Might be. don't think there's any scent in it. Maybe put five drops of tea tree oil in it or something at one point. There's no great scent in it. It, uh, it does its job. Okay, moisturiser, rock face for men, moisturiser. Inexpensive. Try and get the light onto it. Inexpensive. And uh, for what it costs. Pretty good. A little goes a long way. Okay. Right, next week uh, I'm away. I'm working away from home next week. I'm away Monday. And I'm back Friday night. Uh, and they will we'll see what it's like. I don't know. I've never stayed where I'm going before. Uh, so I don't know what the facilities are like in any way, shape or form. Uh, I'm able to do the odd video round away. Otherwise there'll be no new nothing new until next week and now moisturizers had a chance to go in for it so I'm going to be using Kenneth Cole black this isn't the vintage black this is the old stuff I had this sealed under the bed for god knows how long and I cracked it open about six months ago and uh, it's a really nice scent I've got a Dior Fahrenheit which is all Chambray is based upon and around. So I quite like the kind of coarse end. So hey, you know after it's nice if you can use the same thing throughout the shave. If you haven't got it, 
Who gives a shit? Just use what you've got. Okay, that's us for today. We shall start off with what do we use? Quick recap. The razor, the timeless bronze, solid bar, 0.38 blade gap. Uh, I explained the blade gap. Don't believe the blade gap. It's the razor is far more efficient than the blade gap. Uh, if you just go and buy the, the measurement, if you go back through the video at the beginning, I discussed the width of the base plate and the difference between that and other razors that I measured it against. Very good razor, solid bronze, heavy, nice and efficient. The blade was jet red on its eighth use. Peripheral item or ancillary item or quite important item was pedestal ball, as you can see at the bottom there. That's from the grip, there's no glaze on there, so it's not grippy at all, and there's some texture on the bottom as well, so it sticks to your hand like shit to a blanket. Uh, Charles Shaving Company, pedestal ball, dimples in the bottom. The brush, absolute stunning brush. Cashmere knot, nice and soft, and just the absolute the shape is a joy to hold and a joy to use. Just get it between your fingers, I mean, oh, your hands. Yeah, absolutely fantastic shape. Hopefully, Cameron gets his finger out and gets my clone made. The reason not to buy clones is the guy who made it, brush guy, just walked away, stopped making knots and walk, brushes and walked away. That's all the main ancillary is done and we followed up with some tea tree, some rock face and Kenneth Cole Black. That's it. Saturday morning I'm going to go have a cup of coffee while I do the editing and uh, I'll see you in the next shave, as when that may be. Panning ahead, uh, I'm turning the idea of shave number 50 being a live one. Uh, when that's going to happen, don't know. That's not set in stone, that's a variable, it's a consideration. It's just an idea I've got whizzing down in my head. Uh, so if we do do it, that will probably be done on a Sunday afternoon at some point. I think looking at the calendar, it may well fall over the, over the festive period. Maybe, I'm not too sure. I haven't worked, worked out where we are. I think it's in 42, 43. We'll see, how, we'll see how things pan out anyway. But I'll, I'll, I will do a, a live shave sometime in the future. Anyhow, that's enough of my waffle. Uh, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Any comments? Leave them below and uh, I'll get back to you. And uh, bye for now.